From one athlete to another. From one athlete to another. From one athlete to another. The 2014-2015 season was unprecedented. Through adversity, injury, harsh weather, and trying environments, we all managed to make this year one for the books. The year kicked off with football. You made this whole town proud to be a mock. You scored a SoCon championship. A bye in the playoffs. You advanced by beating Indiana State. Then played New Hampshire close on their very cold home turf. You finished eight in the final polls, which is a school record. Produced a few All-Americans and impressed NFL scouts along the way. 2014 was a historical year for the boys of fall. Women's basketball rocked the college basketball scene by not only upsetting the number four ranked Lady Vols and number seven ranked Stanford. All of this on the way to an undefeated conference slate. A conference coach of the year for Jim Foster. The team's third consecutive conference tournament title. And a bid to the NCAA tournament. What a season. What a season. What a season. On the subject of basketball, the men's team had a good campaign as well. From blocks to buzzer beaters, the power sea was worn with pride every night. Anything put in Justin Toya's path was swatted away. His defensive prowess paved the way to winning the Conference Defensive Player of the Year award. The team also produced the first 20 win regular season in over 20 years. Not even the 1997 Sweet 16 team had that many by the time the tournament rolled around. The wrestling team continued its dominance over the conference by winning its fifth straight title. Nick Soto won his fourth individual title. He's only the 17th wrestler to achieve that feat in SOCON history. Sean Boyle earned the Conference Wrestler of the Year prize. And the team sent seven wrestlers to the NCAA tournament. Seems like that team's unstoppable. In the fall, cross country's Tegan Henderson won two races in a row. First at the Powered Invitational here in Chattanooga. Then the Vanderbilt Commodore Classic in Nashville. The women's indoor track team won a SOCON championship in the distance medley relay. While the men's squad nearly missed a win at the same event. The outdoor season is still being run. Softball skipper Frank Reed earned his 500th win as a mock early on in the season. The season is still going, but if it's anything like last year's campaign, we're not worried about it. We're also not worried about both golf teams. The women are coming off of a SOCON championship season, while the men are coming off of a runner-up one. Both teams had productive fall seasons and are off to a great start in their spring season. After beginning the season with a five-game win streak, women's tennis are on their way to big things this year. Their story is also still being written. In some cases, the win-loss record does not tell the whole story. Men's tennis fought very hard every time they took the court. Forcing many of their individual matches to three sets and to the last point. Injury upon injury forced the soccer team to go through seven different goalies throughout their year. But with a new coaching staff comes new hope. And volleyball, there's something to be said about getting four of their six conference wins on the road. That's certainly not an easy feat. Along the way, many writers and organizations took notice of what we did. Emily McLennan earned the Tennessee Golf Association's Women's Player of the Year honor. And Jasmine Joyner earns Tennessee Sports Writer Association Women's Basketball Player of the Week. Lauren Gaynor, Jared Johnson, and Tegan Henderson all earned SOCON Student Athlete of the Week honors. ESPNW recognized Chattanooga when they gave Nicole Osterman a Softball National Player of the Week award. Volleyball found themselves on a national academic list. The American Volleyball Coaches Association Academic Award to be precise. Meanwhile, the men's cross-country squad had the second highest team GPA in the nation. We also caught the eye of those within the university, celebrating the athletes with the highest cumulative GPA. The Dale May Award was handed out to Tracks Patrick O'Brien and Kayleen Chadwell from women's tennis. Kayleen had a 3.88 and Patrick had a perfect 4.0. As a department though, we all did great. The full GPA was a 3.04. 
12 teams had GPAs of 3.0 or better. 139 athletes made the Dean's List and better still. Better still, 41 of us scored a perfect 4.0 in the classroom. It's clear we take the term student athlete very seriously. It's not easy doing what we do. It's not easy doing what we do. It's not easy doing what we do. That's obvious. But I believe I speak for all of us when I say we wouldn't want it any other way. All the hard work pays off in one way or another. All the time in the weight room, practice fields and courts. All those long bus rides, weekends spent on the road, late nights and early mornings. It all paid off in 2014 and 2015. It all paid off in 2014 to 2015. So from one athlete to another. From one athlete to another. So from one athlete to another, go Mocs. Go Mocs. Go Mocs. So from one athlete to another, go Mocs.